Remember how your lifestyle of putting spaghetti on white bread for dinner and arguing with your wife while all the windows are open so the neighbours can hear everything <laughs> Their son's crying again was totally destroyed by the carbon tax. No, Alan Jones switched his rage back to kids who play rap music too loudly in their cars. What's the carbon tax again? It was the earth-saving legislation that gave most households in Australia an extra 20 cents a week after the rebate. Hmm, I thought it would cost me a small amount of money. That's why I voted for the world to end. It's 20 to 50 cents a day if they don't take away the rebate. Why do you think that's going to make an impact on the quality of your life? Because I'm an idiot. And my vote counts. Idiots that spend most of their lives in little air-conditioned cubicles and haven't yet noticed that... You can have a good day at the beach in July. <laughs> <laughs> That's so original. While you were busy cracking lame, overdone witticisms about the sharp demise of life on Earth as we know it, classic edgy material. Anyone's opinion who actually matters was gathering irrefutable evidence, drafting and collaborating on effective, beneficial, life saving policies, with consultation from leading experts on the economy, and something often forgotten in the debate by the right, which is arguably slightly more important than a high score the climate. No, no, this, this little figure on paper. Here, much more important. Everyday Aussies have got the climate bit handled. Yeah, I could get a PhD in climatology if I wanted. I mean, I got this toy giraffe out of a claw machine in 94, so don't doubt my persistence, I guess is what I'm saying. We as a society think it's okay to ask this guy what he thinks on the matter. I guess we were informed enough. After all, we saw a 30 second ad paid for by people who openly admit they want us to work for two dollars a day. Yeah, pretty schmick how they were looking out for me on this one. Thanks for explaining to me one of the most important reforms in our nation's history in under 30 seconds. You guys are the zoot review of politics, making it easy. I'm also able to steal lolly bags from kids' birthday parties by pretending to be Cartman from South Park. Okay, so you go to a mechanic when your car is broken because you don't know anything about fixing cars, am I correct? Yeah. But you still think you know something about a matter infinitely more complex like the global climate system than NASA does. Yeah. Man, why does she get to throw peanuts at me? Because she has a human brain, which like many others in this country is incapable of basic five-year-old reasoning such as the deduction that maybe repealing the carbon tax isn't a good idea when Antarctica just broke in half! Oh, I don't want to think about that, it's scary. Well, the old Alternatives a lot scarier, Sue. Hundred dollar legs of lamb. My taste. <laughs> That message speaks way more to me than ending life on this planet as we know it! I guess the upside of irreversible climate change is that a lot of people like that are gonna die. Barnaby, you knew that the price of a leg of lamb wasn't gonna go up anything like you said it was under the carbon tax. No, I actually didn't. And I'm the smartest man in New England. If only we had a one-eyed man to be king up there, but we're all blind! The fact that your side of the debate is still trying to scare the general public with the cost of a roast dinner when the repercussions of not acting on this issue is a temperature increase so high that the world will only be able to sustain a billion people or less. Works because we're that f***ing dumb! Get in there, Tony! You earn them labour! Some yobbos on the arse end of the planet gave me a mandate to kill six billion people! And that mandate should be respected! Oh, that's probably going to affect me a little bit more than a tiny power hike that was fully compensated. But I guess the silver lining is it's going to take a huge chunk out of Melbourne. I know, I was going to donkey vote, but then I thought, yeah, nuts to Melbourne. And no one wants people from Melbourne dead more than Gina Reinhardt funded political prostitute Barnaby Joyce, who was so concerned with those in his electorate doing it tough that he voted for the coalition budget. Your first indication that Joycey cares about you in the slightest. By the second kick in the guts of empathy. Ugh. Oh, big print of love. Is that by voting for the carbon taxes repeal, Barnaby Joyce's Liberals for People Who Think Shepherd's Pie is Too Ethnic Party voted for their constituents, primarily comprising of farmers, to suffer under future droughts so severe it'll make the ones they're currently facing in northern New South Wales and Queensland look like they're canoeing on Lake Victoria. Think that's an exaggeration? Here's the Theophiro facts. Australia's arable land estimated to halve. What? Uh, still gonna vote for him. After all, always have. What a surprise that King Billy Coke Bottle's audience can be relied on to make the right decision in 2016. Because obviously, by voting to half Australia's farmland, the Nationals are looking out for farmers. Well, I voted for some of the farms. When I was kissing Gina Reinhardt's feet the other day, I noticed some mushrooms down there. Stop talking city talk, Barnaby. Oh, sorry, to the people that vote for me, they're known as Umbrellas for Mutts. No $2 shops visits for me. 
anyway, I reject this science. I'm entitled to do that. I used to be a bouncer. So with my qualifications of standing, is it any surprise that I came to this deduction on the day of its repeal? Look at the weather today. Look at the way you dress. No one thinks it's too hot. Hi, question from one of the only credible journalists in the press gallery. Can you stop being such a dumbass? Right, too much to drink, mate. Out you get. H hey, I haven't drunk anything. Relax, just relax. Take a fiver, mate. And... Huh. It's actually pretty hot out here. A bit of... Roll in the mud to cool off a bit. Ah, uh, what he means to say is that under the carbon tax, emissions went up. I suppose when you're plotting to kill billions of people in the third degree, lying to the Australian public wouldn't really be a moral issue for you, would it, Greg? Mm, I'm gonna lie again and say no, it was hard. Even harder than it was to hide the basic facts that emissions went down by as much as 17 million tonnes in a single year, which is a 0.8% drop. The largest annual reduction in 24 years of monitoring and has so far stopped emissions increasing a projected 2%, as well as being chiefly responsible for an overall reduction of 3.6% in the short period of time it was in effect. Oh, look, someone's got to be the Liberal Party's Minister for the Environment, all right? And I lost the arm wrestle to everyone else in the party. Want to hear another line? Yeah, that should come for me for being unbelievably selfish. What you got, mate? It's the world's biggest carbon tax. Forgivable mistake from someone who's so lumbering in stature that if he ever delivered his speeches horizontally, it'd be very difficult to tell the difference between him and a corpse. Uh, why do you have to do his speech about his vision for Australia's future in a graveyard? Oh, wait, this one's got a pulse. Yeah, send it back to the lodge. According to official OECD data, Australia had the fifth lowest effective tax rate on carbon of all its members. I can't believe it. Tony Abbott lied. Mm, so what if he did? Our emissions are like less than 1%. It doesn't even make a difference. Nice internet troll comment, which is the annoying little weasel version of going to an anonymous meeting and saying, Hi, my name's Megasackwack69 and I'd just like to admit that I'm a complete and utter asshole, and that I'm fine with that, so no need for further cancelling, see ya. China, you know that country that's the world's biggest polluter by a mile is modelling their cap and trade scheme off of the lessons of our carbon tax. No impact! Just like it didn't have any impact on the Australian economy with their own Bureau of Statistics finding the effect was too small to measure, not to mention that 1% is a lot of carbon! <laughs> Sweet. I helped seep an idea into the public conscience that I thought was original, but was actually just recycled telegraph nonsense. Good to see the karma was almost instantaneous, with the NBM pretty much straight off the mark, scrapped. Pin. <laughs> What a bunch of noobs! While those that were more than happy to vote for irreversible climate change in exchange for 20 cents a day were thanked in kind with a government so insatiably malicious it's not even content with global destruction. Give me that 20 cents back or I'll make you see the doctor, mate. Hang on a second, Kaiser. This is costing me more money! Make sense yet? If corporations don't pay, you do. With the crippling of every single social service this nation has in order to continue the grossly unjust tens of billions of dollars in handouts, these companies that bankroll the Liberal Party's election campaigns receive year in, year out, despite the fact that just the top five of these mining giants earn half of this country's national budget annually, yet pay some of the lowest tax rates on the planet. Can't argue that the wealth isn't getting spread around. Using their morally bankrupt political lapdogs to convince everyday Australians they claim to be on the side of that these these mega companies not only deserve but need an additional 7.6 billion dollar tax cut to add to the additional billions they received in this year's budget right smack bang in the middle of their patronising and unbelievably untruthful attempt to scare the public with a fictitious budget emergency invented solely to justify its master's depraved and incomprehensibly insidious greed which one day very soon will result in an environmental catastrophe so large it'll make Joseph Stalin look like Jack Dawkins from Oliver the lovable petty crimes against humanity ne'er do well yet not to mention the further $2.5 billion ransacking of public funds planned to be given straight to the key corporations most responsible for making planet Earth fit in more parties with the 100 billion other dead planets we know of under the flimsy proviso that Yeah, I think I cut my emissions a bit. How's that? Got a cactus in my office with gardens or ash? Oh, great! That sucks up carbon. I'll give you 50 mil for that. Who's got a bonfire in their office? Because that's... That's actually a tree, and it's miniature, so you should probably get an equal opportunity grant for that. 300 million sound good? Yeah, I was thinking of getting one. Well, we can't really give you any money until we see some results, Andrew, so... Yeah, all right, I'll get one an invoice before it. Yeah, no worries, no rush. After all, we've got all the time in the world. The Commonwealth of Australia, where corporate interest and the world's stupidest people meet. Please press the subscribe button now. Come on.